In 2021, Specialized launched the all new Turbo Levo with a very unique Mastermind control unit. Now on some of the lower price point bikes, it still retains the standard TCU, but what is common to both the Mastermind and the standard TCU is the Mission Control app. Now on Mission Control, you can uh, control characteristics of the bike such as the peak power, the assistance, and also the acceleration response. But the question is, what do these features actually mean before you start fiddling with the levers? So today I am joined by AD from Riviera Bike to examine, first of all, what is peak power? Does it matter? And how can you control it? The specialized mission control app together with the mastermind display and microtune have many clever functions. It is vital to understand the basics first, however, such things as peak power and support, before we delve into the many other related functions and how they work to give you more performance from your Levo. Now, before we dive into this whole business of peak power, I do want to point out is that what we're going to be discussing is in quite basic terms. So there's going to be uh, many of you guys who are going to be slightly dissatisfied with the amount of technical detail in this video, whereas there's going to be possibly other people out there where this video is actually going to be spot on for their needs but what I will encourage all of you is to get involved in a hefty discussion about peak power and support and about the mission control app because I'm sure there's many of you who can add some insight into this quite detailed subject right then let's kick things off now it's uh, essential to understand that there are a few component parts to the picture here we have the battery we have the motor we have the software firmware and also the rider and remember that this motor will not be able to kick out the peak power without input of you the rider but uh now ad the battery is pretty much top of the list isn't it it is yeah it's the the f first component that we need to take consideration here yeah right now think of this battery as uh, a reservoir with a little watts in it right that is your that's your fuel tank now um that is governed the flow of that is governed by amps and volts which ad will go into in a minute but the first thing you need to understand the first number in, in the head is uh, that this motor can draw 720 watts from this battery but ad how do we get to the number 720 watts well firstly watts is the standard units for measuring power and that comes from volts multiplied by amps now so this battery we've got 36 volts and 20 amps and that will give us a nominal power of 720 watts quite simple but ad what is the link then between the motor and the battery and how do we control that probably the easiest way to explain it is if you imagine this is a reservoir of water mm -hmm. and these are connected by a pipe right now if you to restrict or enlarge that pipe, it'll provide more power. It's quite simple. So it's yeah. a fat wire, thin wire. Wow, that's, that is very simple. So basically yeah. then guys, if you've got your mission control app, there's a top slider there, which is peak power. Mm -hmm. So by putting the slider back uh, to the left or to the right, that's actually controlling the amount of fuel that goes from the battery to the motor, right? That's correct, yeah. Wow, simple. Now folks, got ahead of ourselves there a little bit. Now when we say 720 watts, we mean 720 watts nominal. But Eddie, what does nominal actually mean? Uh, nominal is a bit of an average, basically. So a battery fully charged will provide more power than a battery that's nearly discharged. So it's gradual okay. power loss. So I guess that then is connected to the pipe as well, right? Yes. And I, suppo no I suppose if, uh, well, for example, if you're taking a piss, then the first part of the piss, you're going to be hitting the back of the seat, whereas towards the end, you're going to be near the front of the seat. But I guess you shouldn't be weighing on the seat in the first place, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> and I suppose also what you need to understand is maybe that's not an ideal scenario for a mountain bike, is it? Well, no, because when you're pedaling, you're going to feel it as you're going along. Your bike is getting gradually less and less power. So to counter that, you have the firmware in the, uh, in the bike will just take you as that number we've got here which is 36 volts 
120 amps. So it'll keep a constant flow of, of juice into the motor, right? Exactly. So when you hit 10%, like many of us have been in the red, that's the only time then that the yeah. software will restrict that power. Yeah, and it's important to understand that, folks. That is the only time where the power will be limited to your motor. Okay, quick summary then, folks. Now, the supply of juice from the battery to the motor is governed by the firmware of the bike. And also you, the rider, can control that by way of that mission control app in the peak power slide at the top there. Um, so, 720 watts, that's one number. However, 720 watts is not the amount you're gonna be getting out of the cranks, is it? That's correct, Steve. What you're getting is 560 watts. Oh, another number, another number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we can understand when you're converting electrical energy into mechanical energy, like we have in this Bros motor, you get a lot of inefficiencies. That could be state of charge, condition of the battery, the state of the motor, ambient temperatures, heat. So that motor is about 75% efficient. That's where we get 560 watts. What are you saying then? We have got electrical input power and we've also got mechanical output power, right? That's correct, yeah. Okay, right. Uh, but AD, you say 560, all we hear of is that uh, traditional mid-drive e bag motors at 250 watts. Why is that? Well, we're going back to the term nominal again. Oh, I love it. So uh, that is basically the amount of power that motor can handle on sustained times, hours, days, years, time. Because if you're going to be running it at 560, mm -hmm. it's going to literally blow up it's and overheat. It's not, though, is it? <laughs> well, think about your car. Right. Your car's got, say, 200 horsepower. Mine hasn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what yours are yeah, running on. Yeah, go on, even mule power. <laughs> but, uh, so to get all that 200 horsepower, you're going to be rev redlining it. 7,000 revs a minute. Yeah, and then your engine's going to be on the road everywhere. Right. So you're going to be cruising mostly at about two or 1,000 revs at about 100 brake horsepower, and you'll do tens of thousands of miles on it. Yeah. It's the same thing with the nominal power. Right. So this is 250 watts then, is the kind of power this motor will be able to sustain over a, over a period of time. Exactly, yes. Okay. Okay, AD. So, which moves us nicely on to the impact of the rider then in this equation. We've Correct. got 560 watts, haven't we, at our disposal? We have. Now, talking about for peak power, so for you to get all that power, you're going to have to give something back it's not free yeah. so now you might have heard the specialized marketing uh which they said four it times you four times you in in turbo in turbo so the average rider basically pumps out about 140 watts okay we've got another number here folks 140 watts average amount of watts a rider can kick out yeah so now with your slider at 100 percent you only need to give 140 watts of your own power wow. to get the full 560 from that. That's not bad, is it? And that's a combination of 700. Right, okay, so let's summarize there. So, so you, if you wanna get 560, you, need, you the rider needs to put 140 watts in. Now that's irrespective of the size and weight of the rider, right? Correct, yeah. Right, okay, I understand that. So that makes sense. Irrespective of the rider, you need to put 140 watts in, right? To get your 560 out, which mm -hmm. means it's gonna give you another number. What if you're Chris Hoy? Well, if you're Chris Hoy, and I think I read somewhere that Chris Hoy can pump out two and a half thousand <laughs> watts or something. Yeah. So you're talking three kilowatts. And I mean, yeah, he could boil a couple of kettles. So this, this is where I need to get. So basically, <laughs> So you got 560, Chris Hoy is going to put his 140 in, but he's actually going to give you more. So mm. that's going to be over and above what the motor's giving you. So when we talk yeah. about peak power, we're talking about what the motor can give you, what the rider can give you, plus a load of extra. Mm. Yeah. What do you but mean, what, mm, yeah? But what you've got to, <laughs> you've got to, I missed this recording. It's fine, <laughs> go on. Yeah, go on. <laughs> and I think the other thing we need to say is, remember that 140 is an average now, the average rider can probably peak 
yeah. are about five, six, seven hundred watts. Yeah. An average rider can give the equal amount of power as that motor, so you can generate a kilowatt. Yeah, you, you, that's peak you, power, though, right? Yeah, peak. Yeah, that's why I'm saying. So what we're doing now is we're kind of going into the realms of the support part of the equation. The support part comes into the into the emission control app as well, which is a, a whole new topic, isn't it? But it is interlinked with with this with this peak power thing, isn't it? Yes. And I think, folks, it's a feature we will turn to next. Uh, so there you go, AD. Peak power. I think we've covered the basics of it. Uh, folks, have. please get involved in the comments, like I mentioned earlier. I'm sure there's going to be many of you who can add to this discussion in depth. Have a big arm wrestle about the subject, if you will. No problem. Uh, I think next, AD, is we need to turn to the whole business of support. We do, and yeah, uh, that's when it yeah it gets a little bit more complicated. More complicated? I, think, I thought it was going to get more simple. Folks, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN for more uh, emails of my content. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And like I said, please, please get involved in the comments. So see you next time.